In the first photo of the sequence, Dorothea is still quite far away. And it's very much a snapshot. It's a photograph that takes in the scene, with the canvas screen and the family group in the middle of the photo, and little of interest. The faces are too small to be compelling, and the viewer is still very much on the outside, without any real human contact having been made. And it tells in the photo. The three children are stiff and uncomfortable with the camera, and Florence has her shoulder raised as she's positioning the baby to breastfeed. The background is an uninteresting mix of washed out sky, trees and dirt. And the diagonal lines of the canvas ropes exiting the frame on the sides are distracting. In the next three photographs, Dorothea gradually moves closer. There's no way of knowing the exact sequence of these three photographs because the negatives had no numbers on them. And I'm basing my review on the majority opinion of what that sequence was. However, what is clear is that Dorothea was working the scene, trying out a variety of angles and gradually cleaning up the compositional clutter, and realizing that the context was distracting in the photograph and that Florence should be the only focus and the only subject of the photograph. Maybe I'm reading more into it than this there, but it seems to me that Dorothea was actually somewhat hesitant about entering that private space of the canvas screen that she only plucked up the courage to enter Florence's personal space in the fifth exposure. And that seems to have been the key difference. In the last photograph, the viewer feels the intimacy of being in Florence's space and of being with her. In the second photograph of the sequence, Florence is now breastfeeding the baby. It's essentially a crop of the first shot, but now excluding the children, that have moved away, probably because they're feeling shy about the stranger. The photograph still remains disconnected, partially because Florence's eyes are closed, and the viewer still feels like they're looking in on a scene as opposed to being in the scene with Florence. The diagonal line of the tent pole and the background on the left third is quite distracting, and Dorothea also clipped the top of Florence's head. She's trying that first rule of composition, if in doubt, move closer. But the relationship between Florence, the background, and the suitcase that's out of focus in the foreground just doesn't gel. And she's also lost a lot without the children in the shot. With a tighter vertical crop that eliminated the background, she could have had another famous photograph. Except it's doubtful a newspaper would have been willing to publish a photograph of a mother breastfeeding. In the third photo, Dorothea starts moving to her left just a little bit to clear up the tension that sits between Florence and the tent pole which partially obscures her. She reduces the suitcase on the foreground to a mere line, hinting at something being there without actually showing it. Florence is now relaxing. She stopped feeding the baby and she's visibly more comfortable. One of her children has moved back into the scene and is looking for comfort by cuddling with mom on her shoulder. Dorothea is beginning to zoom in on the famous photograph and she's also beginning to make a connection with Florence. The intimacy that's revealed in this photograph is quite touching, but the landscape format doesn't work. There's dead space both on the left and right hand side and the background on the right is especially distracting. In the fourth photograph, Dorothea finally goes for the portrait format. She moves over a little bit further to the left, and Florence actually responds to it by turning towards Dorothea, and now looks directly at her. Much of the composition is starting to come together in this photograph, but Dorothea is still too far away from her subject. The suitcase, the bare background, the lamp, the tent, they all add context, but it actually takes away from the overall photograph. And the fact that Florence's daughter has turned and looks at the camera somehow is less powerful than when she was looking away from the camera. Then Dorothea takes the plunge. She walks right up to Florence. She kneels, she puts her hand on the tent pole to steady herself, and she frames Florence in a tightly cropped composition at eye level eliminating all the clutter of the context except for the canvas tent which now acts like a background drape in a portrait studio. 
The little boy hurries back to his mom for support, and both children turn their faces away from the camera, probably because they're shy about the stranger being in their tent. So they want to be close to mom, but they're too afraid to look at the camera. It's a deeply human reaction with a universal understanding of the body language. Florence looks past Dorothea into the distance, her chin resting on her hand. Her delicate fingers are pulling down her face in a deeply compelling image of concern. The only compositional error that remains is that Dorothea's fingers on the tent pole is captured as well. The FSA actually retouched this before the photograph was published, so today you can find two versions of this photograph online, some with and some without Dorothea's fingers. So let's take a look at this final photograph of the sequence in terms of composition. To me the most striking feature of this photograph is actually not anything to do with the composition. It's the incongruency of the finely boned and beautiful face of Florence that's hidden under this mask of suffering and her delicate fingers which are dirty and calloused. The delicate touch of the hands on the face is what makes this image poignant for me. So I suppose one can say that really, again, it's, it's a question of a decisive moment that has captured, except that Dorothea didn't work in the same way that Henri worked. She, she worked the scene to get to this photograph, but the moment that she captured was a decisive one. The boy's haircut only serves to underscore the sense of inherent wrongness of what you see, this incongruency between the circumstances and the persons. The little girl's clenched fists help to convey that same sense of suffering and, and bearing up under it. Compositionally, the fact that Florence was not looking at the camera was very important. Uh, I'm sure she did it because of the fact that she was embarrassed to look at a camera so up close and personal to her, and she probably found it easier to look past it. But what it does is it creates a symbolic effect. Uh, it takes Florence's gaze from looking at you, the viewer, to stoically looking into the distance the fact that she's bearing and bending under the burden of her children while shielding their faces from the outside world also touches on this universal symbolism of motherhood. Compositionally, this is achieved with a triangle of heads that's all resting on this slightly forward-tilted body of Florence, which is then anchored back to the horizontal of her lap with the diagonal of her arm. When you overlay the rule of thirds onto this photograph, the composition fits very well into it. The two top thirds intersecting exactly between the heads. Florence's eyes sitting just above the top third line. Her upper arm aligning with the left vertical and the right vertical passing down between her own skin and that of her daughter's. The depth of the scene and the context is not shown anymore. It's now implied with an out-of-focus tent pole and an out-of-focus canvas. It's discreet and it doesn't distract from the composition at all. The only, and it's really a minor distraction, is Dorothea's own hand, which in the example we're looking at have been retouched to make it less visible. However, this is a minor element that recedes into insignificance in the face of this powerfully symbolic composition. Dorothea Lange has said this about documentary photographs. She said, Documentary photographs carries with it another thing, a quality in the subject that the artist responds to. It's a photograph which carries the full meaning of the episode or the circumstance or the situation that can only be revealed because you can't really capture it by this other quality. There is no real warfare between the artist and documentary photographer. He has to be both. Remember that Dorothea's experience up until this point was in portrait work. But the FSA wanted her 
to document massive events happening on a grand scale. This required her to work more in a format that was closer to landscape photography of anything. And she was able to make some pretty compelling photographs in that style. Yet it seems to me that her most compelling work was where she infused the documentary side of the work with her artistic skills as a portrait maker. Where she also brought in the symbolic element that spoke to a universal that everyone could instantly understand. I think what made Migrant Mother become the representative photograph for the Depression era was the fact that it wasn't a mere documentary moment. It was an artist who worked a scene in order to bring something of the universal, of a larger symbolism of the time, into that photograph. That's what made this a great photograph. Thank you for listening to the podcast. and It's been very touching to see how many people enjoy this. Join me again next month when we look at another famous photograph and try and understand what makes it great. Thank you.